Hi, I'm Joe Wilinski, Program Manager for ConveyUX, which is Seattle's annual user experience conference coming up in our sixth year. Uh, that's going to be February 27, February 28, and March 1. And I get to talk with all the great speakers that we'll have on hand at the event. And uh, I'm working out of my home office on Vashon Island just outside of Seattle, and I am speaking with Molly Wright Steenson. Hello, Molly. How are you doing today? Hi there. How are you? Yeah, so uh, everything's going well. It's good to have you as part of the conference. Uh, where are you talking to us from today? I am in beautiful Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Well, I, I, we're happy to uh, have you uh, coming uh, across the continent to visit us at the conference in Seattle. Uh, for people that may not be familiar with uh, you and your work, uh, why don't you talk a little bit about your background and the types of things that you're doing now? I am an associate professor at Carnegie Mellon University in the School of Design, and this is my third year at Carnegie Mellon. Um, I'm an age-old UX pioneer. Um, I started working with the web in 1994 and worked at a number of Fortune 500 companies and design studios and startups uh, until the early 2000s when I became a design professor in Italy at the Interaction Design Institute Ibrea. And then I did a master's and a PhD in architectural history and became a journalism professor and then a design professor. So if this makes no sense to you, that's perfectly fine. But what it set me up to do is figure out where we come from as UX practitioners and interaction designers and, um, and how that came to be uh, throughout the history of architecture design and technology. And uh, what types of things are you uh, working on in your regular activities at the university? Uh, at the university, I teach anything from anyone from undergraduates to master's students to PhD students. Um, I teach seminars. I teach service design. I know that Convey UX will have a lot of service designers there, so that's part of what I do. Um, I teach more analytical doctoral um, classes, and I also teach senior studio. Well, Carnegie Mellon's been uh, bringing uh, uh, pushing out a lot of great uh, professionals into uh, the user experience space for a long time, so we're gr glad to uh, have you as part of the conference. Uh, uh, so I'm sure that uh, there's a lot of things that you always have going on. Um, what's been consuming your time lately? What, what new and exciting things are going on? Well, the biggest news is that my book just came out, and it's called Architectural Intelligence, How Designers and Architects Created the Digital Landscape. MIT Press published it. It came out in December, and um, that's super exciting. Uh, it came out of my work that I did as a doctoral student plus a ton more research, and I'm thrilled to share it with the world. It's about the history of artificial intelligence and cybernetics in architecture, and what many people don't realize is that that put in place the foundation for what we do online today and what we do as interaction designers and UX people. Well, it's certainly uh, uh, yeah, the topic of uh, artificial intelligence is something that uh, seems to be in, in every other uh, uh, technology article that I, that I read lately. It's, it's certainly a, a big topic. Uh, are there any uh, particular aspects of it that have uh, caught your interest? Well, the fact is it's not new. We've been talking about AI um, since the 1950s, if not before. The term artificial intelligence got coined in 1955, and the basic platform of research that we do with AI, um, that's been around since the mid-50s as well. So I find it really interesting when we talk about AI being new, when in fact it's actually quite old, and a lot of tenets of AI went into what we do as people who work with design and technology. Well, your topic is then uh, directly related to that. Uh, it's uh, artificial intelligence, old friend, new tricks. Mm -hmm. uh, why don't you talk a little bit about uh, what you'll be uh, bringing to us at the conference? Sure. Um, I'll talk a little bit about some of where AI came from and what 
people were initially doing when they were researching AI in the 50s and 60s and how that carries forward till today. And I'll talk a little bit about some of the case studies in my book. So some people at Convey UX might be familiar with using pattern languages when they design. And that's an idea that came from an architect named Christopher Alexander. And I'm willing to bet that a number of people who will be at the conference have the book A Pattern Language on their bookshelves. But they might not realize the ways that that ties back to the history of AI and to cybernetics and to different ideas of technology. Or people might not realize that Nicholas Negroponte, who founded the MIT Media Lab, um, in the mid-80s was an architect, and before he started that lab, he ran something called the Architecture Machine Group, which operated close collaborations between the AI lab at MIT and the School of Architecture and Engineering students. So in the 60s and 70s, early 80s, these ideas of AI and interfaces for AI were what Nicholas Negroponte and the research he's worked with, re researchers he worked with, that's what they were studying. Um, I'll also talk a little bit about the history of information architecture, a little bit about um, the work of Richard Saul Werman, who lots of us know from his work um, on information architecture and information architects, but if not, if you've ever seen a TED talk, you know who Werman is because he founded the TED conferences. So I'll be looking at those different histories and how they roll up together to create um, the new tricks that we see ourselves in today and look forward to the future of where AI and UX might be heading. Well, uh, re related to uh, the new tricks area, are there uh, any uh, aspects of artificial intelligence uh, going on right now that, you know, the, you know, are emerging uh, variants or techniques that you think are particularly interesting? What I think is really um, important for UX people is thinking about how we frame problems because that's a big part of what we do, right? And when we look at artificial intelligence, a lot of us are not going to be in the business of crafting algorithms. It's not what we're trained to do. We didn't come from statistics and math and computer science backgrounds, a lot of us. Um, but where I think we have a big, um, a big potential influence is in how we shape problems, how we collect data, how we work against being biased in what we set up and what we set up AI to do, and to figure out ways to use AI and machine learning as a material for design. Well, I appreciate taking the time to uh, introduce yourself to us and uh, our prospective attendees, and uh, we look forward to having you here in Seattle uh, in just a couple of months. I can't wait. All right. Thanks a lot, Molly. Bye-bye.